Welcome to the High Commission of Canada in the United Kingdom. In June, we celebrated the 95th anniversary of the opening of Canada House, and today we're taking you inside for a special virtual tour. So join us and learn more about the beautiful Grade 2 listed building that we call home. Canada House is the second oldest collection of buildings on Trafalgar Square. The oldest building is St. Martin in the Fields Church right across the square. A church has existed on this site since the 1700s. The buildings which make up Canada House, built between 1824 and 1825, include the former Royal College of Physicians to the north and the former Union Club to the south, and were made to look like one from the outside. Now let us take you inside. We are currently standing in what was once known as the Union Club. In 1923, Canada's High Commissioner Peter Larkin acquired the former Gentlemen's Club, whose members included the likes of the Duke of Wellington and Charles Dickens, with the mandate to unify the Government of Canada's activities in the UK under one roof. Back then, the neighbourhood was called Little Canada for its business and cultural links to the country, such as the Grand Trunk Railway Building and the Canadian Pacific Building, whose name remains at the top of the building to this day. Between 1923 and 1925, extensive renovations of Canada House took place under the guidance of architect Septimus Warwick. On the 29th of June 1925, King George V and Queen Mary officially opened the newly renovated Canada House. The entrance they used on this grand occasion is now marked with a throne made just for the opening. To the left, we can also see four keys in the case on the wall. Three of them, gold, silver, and nickel, were made for the 1925 opening, whereas the fourth was made for the reopening in 2015. Since its grand reopening in 1925, Canada House has undergone multiple renovations, with the most significant being in 1963 when Canada acquired the lease to the Royal College of Physicians and began the process of unifying the interior of the two buildings. Then, in 1997, works were done to make the building more functional while restoring its architectural heritage. And finally, in 2013, works began to unify the newly acquired 2 to 4 Cockspur Street to the west. The most recent renovations were completed in 2015, an occasion marked by a grand reopening of the building by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Canada House has drawn upon the diverse talents of Canadian artists and craftspeople from coast to coast to coast in order to deliver a building that celebrates the very best of Canada in the 21st century. Here in the lobby, we have Arsenal by Gaffey Falk, donated by the Bank of Montreal, which brings Canadian snow into the heart of London. Next to it, the carpet is based on a piece of art called Ancient Ice by Manitoban multimedia artist Denise Prefontaine, portraying the frozen waters suspended in the forms of glaciers and ice caps at Canada's highest point of elevation. As we move across the lobby, we come to the Grand Staircase, one of the world's first floating staircases, which means there's no visible support beam. Because of this, when the building first opened, many visitors were afraid to even climb the stairs for fear they might fall. As we come back down the stairs, we find two large reception rooms named after Canadian Prime Ministers with a significant connection to the United Kingdom. The Mackenzie Room was named after William Lyon Mackenzie King, Canada's longest serving Prime Minister and Canada's Prime Minister during World War II. It was during this time and in this room that then High Commissioner Vincent Massey and his wife would host informal dances for soldiers on leave from the front lines. This room features some beautiful works of art such as David Alexander's While the Land Sleeps and Monica Tapp's Past and Present. On the other side of the Mackenzie Room, we have the Borden Room, named after Sir Robert Borden, Canada's Prime Minister and the UK's ally throughout World War I. As we move upstairs, we come to the British Columbia Room, which was designed to serve as a reception room during VIP visits. Here, we see the Leslie Carpet artwork depicting two eagles in a circle in a traditional Coast Salish design. Gaffey Fox painting pieces of water which evokes the presence of British Columbia's rivers, lakes, and oceans, and Stan Hunt's cedar sculpture, Supernatural Raven. 
As we move through the BC Room, we enter the Quebec Room, which used to be the Deputy High Commissioner's office and is now used as an office for visiting Prime Ministers and Cabinet members. It was while serving under High Commissioner Vincent Massey that Lester B. Pearson witnessed, from this very room, a bomb fall immediately to the south of the Lions on Trafalgar Square during the Second World War. In here, we have Jean-Paul Riopelle's lithograph Poisson and Michel Daigneault's abstract acrylic Mur de Verre. We now take you through to the very top of Canada House, to the Laurier Room, named after Sir Wilfrid Laurier, Canada's Prime Minister during Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee. Designed as a 21st century boardroom, this more recently renovated room has all the electronics of a modern conference room hidden in the ceiling and doubles as a reception room in the evenings. But that isn't the only hidden secret this room holds. The Laurier Room is home to some of the best views in the building. The original windows give on to a spectacular panorama of historic London, from Trafalgar Square to the Houses of Parliament to the London Eye, and of course, let's not forget Canada House's very own Bee Hotel, home to our urban beehive. Well, that brings us to the end of our tour of Canada House. We hope you enjoyed learning about the history of this beautiful building, and we hope to see you once we open Canada House for public tours again. Mm -hmm.